at some of the, the, the sources of revenue that we have as a country. Uh, His Majesty the King was actually talking about uh, uh, diversifying or strengthening uh, our revenue sources as a country. Uh, but maybe we will just look uh, closely at some of these uh, revenue sources and uh, uh, see if we have uh, an opportunity to diversify this. Um, uh, for instance, at the present moment, uh, we, we have a revenue source where we derive 19% of our income from personal income tax and we get 34% uh, from the SACO receipts and from value added tax we get 18% and from corporate income tax it's 8% and donor funds it's about uh, um, 7 to 3% and proposed revenue measures is about 5% but I think uh, this now gives us an opportunity to see if there are opportunities to even strengthen the one that are already existing let's talk about the issue of corporate tax for instance we are only deriving 8% of our revenue from corporate tax what does this mean is this sufficient does this mean we've got a, 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 a shallow uh, corporate uh, base in the country, which is why we only realize a, 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 a revenue pool of 8% from this source? Thank you, John. Uh, I'll see what the corporate sector normally drives our economy because it's private. So, which is quite very, very narrow. Sustain, such that they could be in a position to pay taxes because from a corporate perspective you pay the taxes from your profits so it basically means it's either money nor ma nawala corner they haven't been in a position to make ima profits to pay us so i think that's why they are trying to drive the issue here good as this cool is the manufacturing sector. Once if it's there, it will cool another corporate tax, which will add to our tax revenue, to our revenue source. Yeah, Dr. Chongwa, um, um, I'll give you an opportunity to help us to understand what the king was saying when he, he mentioned the issue of value addition mm -hmm. uh, in everything that we do, particularly in, in the agriculture sector. Or Last year, he was talking mainly about strengthening the agro processing mm -hmm. sector, yes, you know, and this year he brought it in a different context and said, um, let us consider value addition in all the things that we do. I don't know if we have uh, commodities or products that uh, we are not fully utilizing its entire value uh, chain you know for instance um, uh, the sugarcane um, industry you know can we fully explore and uh, realize some value addition um, where sugarcane is concerned and maybe some others you know we've got pulp we've got this and that you know but these products always come back as finished products in the country you yes. know what can we do to make sure that we derive more or, or entire value in this system yeah number one <coughs> We can talk about raw entrepreneurship, for yeah. example. There's a lot that we can do to add value to that. And above all, tourism. Tourism is a culture of which uh, I think in sub-Saharan Africa, the, the Swatini is ranked number one. So, but there is very little, I mean, value chain on these particular sectors. Mm -hmm. So if we can become more innovative and more creative in terms of attracting uh, tourism industry, then definitely even the, our FDIs will be channeled along those areas so that at the end of the day we'll be able to have a broader uh, employment base. And then once we have a broader employment base, definitely the, the, the issues of revenue is going to improve and indirectly the production part is also going to pull in the industry, uh, the revenue part. Yeah, mm. you may also want to to contribute in that regard. You know, how do we um, um, make sure we derive <coughs> full value uh, uh, on the areas where we are already productive? Sugar cane, your pineapple, your pulp, and so on and so forth. You know, do we have um, the sectors that we need to derive um, a full or added value on on the on the current uh, crops production and everything that we have? Yes, in the country that is adding in terms of e value. We have seen in the element here. I'll give a very simple example. See, I want to go to the package, a package, or something. They have added value in terms of because a value adding is taking the raw material that we should be exporting maybe as a bucket for someone to package somewhere, but we now package it ourselves and send it out maybe we write made on, in Swaziland. We have yes. in Eswatin, I'm sorry. We have observed we know some of our companies that are small vegetables are packaging for sale. 
which is you've added the value on whatever the commodity instead of saying selling likasi la banana le linje but um package lo banana hambe so 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 ne brand yakho that adds value so the adding of the value includes leto tinvelete lo funa city funza singa maswati singa hambe sinje maybe ngiyabekisa besicina besende mahi asiswa hambisa angapha angenayo hi branding those kind of things we should add and minimize exportation of a raw material without adding value in whatever we do so ngiya kholelo ukuthi singamaswati sita ukhona ukuthi some of the raw materials si wathatha edzini less now singawa export and we use them for our own purposes yeah um i don't know dr chongwa and now uh, babet dube when i look at the the sources of revenue that we already have you know um we we've been talking about this you know and uh, all stakeholders generally have been talking about our reliance on sacco which when we look at it closely it shows that we derive 34% of our revenue from sacco mm-hmm. and uh, uh, the next uh, biggest source of revenue is personal income tax and the next bigger one is uh, value added tax i think this to me says we have a constrained source of revenue you know because even the other ones that we have is like your 5% 6% and so on and so forth you know and these ones are already overloaded you know or overburdened mm-hmm. if i may say you know in the 2020 2021 budget speech you know what are we likely to see the minister implementation implementing because even year on our proposed revenue measures they are only account for 5% you know uh, which won't change the situation that much in terms of the other constrained areas you know what do we need to do to make sure that at least we we have a sector that also may contributes maybe like your 12 to 15% in terms of uh, um um uh, revenue uh you know words efficiency and multiplication effect mm-hmm. once we have an economic niche how efficient is that niche and number 2 what is the multiplier effect of that particular niche let's take for example we do got poor revenue correction uh, you know systems in the country mm. okay we want to go and pay your tax you find a long queue mm. they close early that it's into efficiency so people would want to pay but the system itself the structure or, or I mean the, the 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 structure itself can be a barrier so let us begin by addressing the barriers what barriers are hindering the capitalization and multiplication of our current revenue structures so this was going to uh, serve us from uh, investing more money in other avenues that we will be hoping to give us back so let us work on the efficiency first uh, after we have uh, circulated the income generation uh, levels or platforms which are highly efficient uh, then we are going to say what is plan b now Okay. Secondly, 34 reliance on sacco which is a time bomb. circle 34%. So we have to find means of one to improve efficiency through uh, to uh, uh, bring up the multiply effect on the existing structures the number 4 in invest in what we call research and development uh, uh, strategies. So kvele kuqalile ke parliament amaswatla mahle indvuna yelitiko letemafa nelrickenback nawo onge malunga e parliament la fire cards na tindvuna tembuso sabavele ke belungele ke kuthula ke wona ke maphakelo ke timali emnyakeni lophelile indvuna nelrickenback beka bethula ke kuqala la maphakelo bekunene njengoba ke sathe ukuthi bekungumnyaka wayo wekuqala ke i cabinet ke fire cards yona ke indvuna nelrickenback lobe kangase waba indvuna ye yahulumende beka kangase waba indvuna yelitiko ke letemafa he delivered a 40 page 
budget speech uh, last year. And uh, what uh, really gave me hope was uh, to see him as a man who also relies on God the Almighty, uh, where in his second paragraph in his speech, and he says, uh, His Majesty the King, and for the Lord's grace and mercy as we navigate uh, this uh, yeah, this country's challenges. September kuti na dunia aga kuna tinfo kwenye stau tibo na amia kwenye wanga 2018 2019 ningo nyama ya kila kuti le budget sibekuna ne asai i ndi we ibuge kuti kuna ne kukui na maga kuna ne eskwame ne na kwenye sikubita na sulumi kuti it's a fully financed budget is this also going to be a fully financed budget I'm also interested in seeing if this year's deficit is going to be reduced compared to the deficit we realized the last year, uh, which in itself was also a reduced deficit compared to the 2017-2018 uh, budget. To read a scripture.